Hello everyone, let's go over some of the newer features of Clothweavers 2.1 to 2.3. I've been getting a lot of emails and questions regarding some of these, and I figure it's just going to be best to make a tutorial covering everything. Okay. Because I don't have much time working, well, a couple updates about my situation. Um, I've been working, you know, a 40-hour week job for the holiday season, and... Those student loans are creeping up on me. They're not going to pay themselves. So there goes a chunk of my paycheck. So I don't really have a whole lot of time to update Cloth Weaver, even though that is my you know my passion to grow this this baby, this program that I've developed. <laughs> so I'm trying to provide all the support I can for it while multitasking and all these other things. It's crazy. Anyway, I digress. Let's continue. <laughs> hey again, everyone. I'm recording this on a different day because an important issue came up that I have just discovered. When using manual bastion, if that's how you pronounce it, um, models that are scaled down, you will, again, want to reduce the sewing force, but also a key component. First, you'll want to reduce the subdivisions. So over here on your character, turn them down to the lowest setting so that way it speeds up the simulation and also aids with the uh, collision doesn't get caught up on too much detail also on the character itself go to the collision modifier and what you will really want to change here is the soft body and cloth you want to change the outer now the reason we want to turn this value down is because since the character being scaled down as it is right now it's using a thickness right so it's saying 0.02 is the amount of collision the space in between the collision of the body and the uh, the cloth so here's like 0.02 now we're gonna reduce it to 0.005 and that should create a skin tight fit so I'll show you right now if we use 0.02 and go ahead and sew the clothing or put on the clothing. And then if we were to sew it, of course it's going to have that issue. But you can see that there's like a big gap. Just, yeah, look how much room we got in between there. So let's delete it. Let's hit the restore button. Click our character. Changes to 0.005. That'll create that skin tight collision. Now I hit put on clothing. Okay. And I'm going to kind of back up a bit to about here. Select the clothing, hit sew clothing. Now you can see we're getting a better fit. But of course, we still need to make a few adjustments. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. So that's how you want to work with uh, Manuel Bastien. What is that? How do you pronounce that thing? Gee whiz. <laughs> so now in edit mode, we have three new buttons. Assign evens, assign odds, and join parallel edges. And we want to assign the groups before we join the edges. So let's select this whole side and hit assign evens all right now pay attention to between which ones are selected and which ones aren't and we're going to do it to the back as well assign evens and you can see it did the opposite now why is this because we want them to kind of mirror each other so select everything and remove the evens make sure you are selecting Okay, see the one that's highlighted here? That's going to be included in the group. Should be. Hit Assign Evens. And select the same one on that side. 
and you're doing that and hit assign evens. Now the top one, the third one, etc. So select the one that's in between, do the odds, and it does the odds. Okay, so now select both groups, odd and even, and now join parallel edges. It can be a bit confusing, I know. Hopefully this speeds up that process. Now that they are assigned, the sew clothing will be able to perform its action. But now we have a new button up here called, or a new slider called Sewing Force. And by default, the clothing models are pretty large. They're scaled up, or at least to fit my character. Um, so if you have a smaller scene, if your characters are scaled down, you will want to reduce the sewing force to like a one, and that will slow it down. For example, if I were to put on the clothing here, it would go pretty slow. Okay. Now if I were to delete it and restore, if I were to crank it up to five, then it's gonna go even faster. It takes a bit of playing around and seeing what works best. Now for this outfit, I'm gonna raise this part up a bit more. Actually these two, because I wanted those two to be a little higher. Typically you want to raise it higher than what it will be, because it will go down due to gravity and other things. So now put on clothing. I just want to see how it's going to look, the sew clothing. Okay, and I've gotten a lot of comments about this happening too. Essentially, it's just colliding with the character too much. So you want to you can kind of select everything and just scale it out a little. Just kind of move it off of the character. This was covered in my other tutorial as well, in the Cloth Weaver 2.0. So hopefully, after Christmas, or well, <laughs> Before Christmas, I'll be able to release Cloth Weaver 3.0, which will have a whole lot more presets and a bunch of new features for you guys. And I see we have some, oh, they're kind of inverting. But there's a lot of trial and error, like most things with 3D. But it's better than modeling all this by itself. Because I've done that before. Having to model every single thing to get it right. And oh, it is brutal. And it's okay if it's not like perfectly mirrored. That adds a little bit of uh, error, natural error to the clothing, because nothing is perfect in the real world. There's always little flaws, which adds character, I think. Yeah, there's a, there, it's a battle, because if you have too many vertices, then it's gonna, it's this, then the simulation is gonna bog down. It's gonna take forever to calculate it. If you have too few vertices, then, you know, you just, you just need more geometry for it to interact with. So there's a balance there that you gotta, an ecosystem to deal with, which I think this is about the right amount, at least for a lower poly character. Okay, now we're going to restart simulation again. That's a little bit better. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. Okay. And I'm also going to be updating um, the clothing materials in 3.0 to have more of a to, al to also include a translucent I believe it is yeah translucent uh, 
ability because you know if you shine shine light through your clothing you can usually see it but uh and yet it's not transparent so it's more of a translucent so i'll be incorporating that into the latest up into the next update hopefully and that should be oh a week until christmas that's that's kind of scary Ex exactly a week from Christmas from today. That is terrifying. I still got to do my Christmas shopping. <laughs> yep. Okay. But I've ranted long enough. So that covers that feature. Is there anything else I need to cover? Reflect. That's another one. Uh, basically, it just flips the geometry on the x-axis, for example. See it doing that? For example, if I wing it out on that side, dink, 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 yeah, it's gonna gonna do that. So that's what that is. That's what that button does. So yeah, I think I've covered what I needed to cover in this next version. Now I'd like to take a moment and share a correspondence that I had with a Don over Blender Market, and they were asking about using Cloth Weaver with something called Avastar and it is a program that allows you to create characters for Second Life, at least that's how I understand it looking at their page. Anyway, they were wondering how to use Cloth Weaver with this application and their dev team had said, Hi, I have Cloth Weaver myself and I've got it to work. There are two suggestions I have for you and after that you're on your own experimenting as I am a beginner with it too. Any cloth simulation works way better on a larger scale. So the first suggestion is to scale the Avastar rig up to 20. The character will scale with it. The second suggestion is to create or is to increase the timeline to 250 frames. It seems to be only 50 by default, which is not enough time for the springs on the cloth to fully settle. That's really the only thing I did differently from what was shown in his meaning my video tutorial. Don't forget to scale the rig and clothing back down again afterwards. And that was from an Etheria. So it's really exciting to see discussions and conversations happening about uh, my add-on. It's pretty, pretty cool seeing there's a community being developed for it. So yes, it can work with Avastar and Manual Bastion. So thanks again, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.